With SpaceX launching their first astronauts into orbit, a fleet of robotic spacecraft heading towards Mars, and the continued development of a future generation of rockets, 2020 has been quite a year for spaceflight. In this video, we're going to take a look back at some of the major events and milestones that have happened within this past year. So let's talk about that. Twenty twenty as a whole has been quite a challenging year. However, the spaceflight industry has been able to persevere through many of these challenges and still meet a lot of accomplishments, as we will see in this video. Now, if there's anything that I don't include in this video, let me know in the comments below. But I tried to have a wide range in topics that we could talk about. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first major event was on January 19th, where SpaceX performed an in-flight abort test of the Crew Dragon capsule. Essentially, they launched the rocket, and during the ascent phase where they would normally go into orbit, they ejected Crew Dragon, or essentially aborted from the rocket. The reason for this was to show the safety in case there were astronauts on board and something were to go wrong with the booster. Then, a couple weeks later, on February 6th, NASA astronaut Christina Cook returned from a record-breaking stay on the International Space Station. She was up there for 328 days in space, breaking the record for the longest continuous stay for any woman in space. And for any NASA astronaut, she's second, only 12 days behind astronaut Scott Kelly. Then, just a few days later, on February 10th, the European Space Agency launched Solar Orbiter. And if you aren't familiar with this, it's a complex mission that's aiming to learn more about the Sun, much like the Solar Parker probe. However, it will be the first spacecraft to ever take images of the poles of the Sun, and hopefully we'll be able to learn more about how the Sun works by doing so. Then, over March and early April of 2020, there were some orbital launches. However, this was about the same time that the United States was starting to get hit by the pandemic. So whether or not there would have actually been announcements during this time frame, we don't know. But COVID kind of took over from there. Which then leads us to the end of April, being on April 30th. NASA had a big Artemis announcement. They released the three organizations that would compete for the Human Landing Systems contract. Now, the Human Landing Systems, or HLS, are the vehicles that will take astronauts from a lunar orbit or orbit around the moon to the surface and back up. And these three selected companies were Blue Origin, SpaceX, and Dynetics. Now, Blue Origin represented the national team that had many other companies associated with it, and Dynetics also had many subcontractors. And each one of these designs is very different and unique in how they plan to get astronauts down to the lunar surface and then back up into orbit. So this was a major announcement because these three companies would have some funding to do further research up until early 2021, where NASA would down select either one or two of these companies to actually provide for the Artemis program. So we're actually going to find out more about this pretty soon and to see which one of these three companies is actually going forward with the design. Then, less than a week later, on May 5th of 2020, China launched the Next Generation Crewed Spacecraft, which can hold roughly six astronauts and is intended or designed to reach lunar orbit. But they don't have any plans for that in the near future. Rather, this is a major milestone because it's showing some of the testing capabilities of their next crewed vehicle. Now, with that being said, this launch did not have astronauts on board. It was just a flight test to see whether or not it worked. Going from a first to a last, on May 20th, Japan launched the 82B launch vehicle for the last time, making the vehicle now officially retired. Now, with that being said, they do have a new rocket on the way. However, this old design completed a total of nine launches over the past 11 years, and this last mission, which happened in May, was to take supplies to the International Space Station. Then, five days later, on May 25th, Virgin Orbit had the first test flight of Launcher 1. Now, if you aren't familiar with Launcher 1, essentially it's a small air-to-orbit rocket, meaning that the rocket is first attached to an airplane, then flown up to a higher altitude, released, and then once the rocket itself is dropped, it ignites and makes its way into space. However, due to an issue with one of the engines, the test flight was a failure. Now, Virgin Orbit was hoping to test Launcher 1 again in 2020. However, due to the pandemic and various issues, they postponed that into early 2021. So that's something that we can look forward to. 
another test flight of Launcher 1. Again, just a few days later on May 30th, another major milestone was hit. And arguably, this is the biggest event of the year. SpaceX successfully launched NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken to the International Space Station. This was a part of the Demo-2 mission, being the last demonstration mission to prove that Crew Dragon vehicle was actually safe, and that NASA could rely on SpaceX for future missions to low Earth orbit. Not only was this SpaceX's first launch of Crew, but it was also the first time a commercial company has launched Crew into orbit, or to the International Space Station. And as the NASA administrator said time and time again, it was Americans launched from American soil on an American rocket for the first time since the space shuttle program ended in 2011. So again, this is a major milestone for the spaceflight industry, and as I mentioned, arguably probably the biggest event in space this past year. Now the launch of Demo-2 wasn't the only exciting thing that happened over the summer. In July, the planets would align, but not all of them, only Earth and Mars. And if you want to know why this is important, you can watch this video that goes into much more detail. But essentially, in July and early August of 2020, that was the perfect time for this two-year period to send missions to Mars, and therefore, anyone in the world that wanted to go had to launch then. Starting out on July 19th, the United Arab Emirates launched Al Amal, which translates from Arabic to English being hope. Now this mission, being a Mars orbiter, is aiming to study the atmosphere and climate of the Red Planet, and this being the UAE's first successful Mars mission. But it hasn't arrived yet, so fingers crossed to hope that they succeed. Then just a few days later, on July 23rd, China launched the Tianwen-1 mission. Now Tianwen-1 is an orbiter, lander, and rover all packed up into one mission, which is pretty ambitious. However, I should mention that the lander itself is really only there to help land the rover onto Mars. It's not necessarily performing too many instruments by itself. Therefore, it's mainly just a rover and the orbiter. However, if this mission is successful, which we will find out in the next few months, then it will be China's first successful mission to Mars, and it will be one of the very few countries that have ever landed something on the red planet. So again, that's a pretty exciting thing to wait for. Then just a week later, on July 30th, NASA launched the Mars 2020 mission, composed of the Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter. If you want to learn more about this mission, I highly recommend you go and watch my last video talking about the main goals of this mission as a whole. Then shortly after this event, on August 1st, Bob and Doug returned back from their stay on the International Space Station, ending the Demo-2 demonstration mission and showing that SpaceX is successful in launching astronauts to the International Space Station, which again is a major milestone for the spaceflight community. Then in that same week, on August 4th, SpaceX tested SN5, or one of their Starship prototypes, completing a 150 meter hop test in Boca Chica, Texas. Then, about a month later, on September 3rd, SpaceX tested SN6, performing another low altitude flight test of 150 meters, which is pretty astounding that they were able to do these two tests less than a month apart. On September 12th, the company Astra had the maiden flight for their Rocket 3. Now due to a guidance issue early into the flight, the rocket malfunctioned and returned to Earth, resulting in an explosion on impact. Roughly a month later on October 13th, Blue Origin had a launch of their new Shepard rocket resulting in the seventh time that they've reused their space capsule. A week later, on October 20th, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission touched down on the asteroid Bennu, this being a first for the agency, however not a first for the world. But again, it's pretty important, because in the collection of these samples, they will be bringing these rocks back to Earth in the year 2023, in which we will be able to analyze them and learn more about the formation of planets and what exists in our asteroid belt. So that's pretty exciting. Then a month later on November 16th, SpaceX launched Crew-1, the first fully operational crewed mission to the International Space Station through a commercial partner, with NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, and Shannon Walker on board. And there is also one JAXA astronaut, Suichi Naguchi. Now the crew is expected to return back to Earth on May of 2021. 
so they still have about five more months up there in space. And they also brought a little guess with them too, as their zero G indicator. A few days later on November 20th, Rocket Lab performed their first attempt at a soft water landing of their electron booster using parachutes. Now the booster was successfully recovered, which is going to hopefully lower the cost to get to space for this small satellite provider. Then just a few days later on November 23rd, China launched the Chang'e 5 spacecraft, a lunar sample return mission. Meaning that over the course of a few weeks following the launch, the spacecraft entered orbit around the moon, landed on the moon, obtained a surface sample, and then returned all the way back to Earth. And the capsule actually got back by December 16th. So this entire mission took a little bit less than a month, which is pretty impressive. While all this was happening around the moon, on November 25th, SpaceX successfully recovered a Falcon 9 booster for the seventh time. So reusing it seven times. Now remember how I said that NASA successfully picked up surface samples from OSIRIS-REx? Well, at the same time, Japan, or the Japanese space agency, JAXA, had been also pursuing another similar mission. However, it was already returning back to Earth. So on December 6th, the JAXA Hayabusa 2 mission dropped off its surface samples from the asteroid Ryugu. Now the spacecraft initially launched back in 2014, and after the course of six years has gone to an asteroid, pick up those samples, and has already gone back to Earth. However, even though Hayabusa 2 has already dropped off the soil samples, or the rock samples from Ryugu, it's actually going on to explore other asteroids in the asteroid belt. Even though it won't be able to collect surface samples, it will still be able to learn more about what all is out there. A few days later, on December 9th, this was a busy day for the spaceflight industry. SpaceX performed a high altitude flight test of the SN8 Starship prototype. A 12.5 kilometer high flight test including some of the key components of the Starship design, which they're going to have to get down perfectly in order for this thing to be reusable. Now, if you want to learn more about this flight test, you can watch my full-blown video going over the entire event. However, a brief overview is that they tested SN8, and it didn't exactly land quite as planned. While this was happening, NASA was announcing the Artemis team, a collection of 18 astronauts with very impressive backgrounds, who will be the next group of Americans to walk on the surface of the moon. And the last major event I'm going to include goes back to the company Astra, where they launched Rocket 3.2. Now remember the one earlier that didn't turn out so well? Well, they ended up fixing it, or for the most part. Even though it didn't officially reach orbit due to some of the issues in the upper stage, it still passed the Kármán line, officially making it into space. So it was a first for the company, however they still have more development to do in the future. So now that we've covered some of the major events that have happened throughout this year, I want to spend a brief amount of time talking about some key numbers to help us understand where the spaceflight industry is growing and if it's changing as much as we really think it is. Now the first thing I want to say is that in 2020, as I'm recording this video, there have been a total of 114 orbital rocket launches worldwide experiencing 10 failures to reach orbit. Now compared to 2019, there were only 102 orbital launches, but there were also only five failures. So 2019 was a pretty successful rate. Now you might be wondering, out of all the orbital rocket launches, how many of them were launched by SpaceX? And the answer is 25. Now SpaceX launched 25 orbital rocket launches in 2020. They launched only 13 in 2019, However, they launched 21 in 2018. So 2020 was a record-breaking year for SpaceX for many different reasons. Now, if we look at 25 launches in a year, that averages to about an orbital rocket launch every two weeks. And if you can compare that to ULA or the United Launch Alliance, who averages to around a launch every two months. So SpaceX is really launching a lot more frequently than their competitors. Now something that we should note is that SpaceX's biggest customer, or who they're launching for the most, is themselves, Because out of the 25 orbital rocket launches, 14 of them were Starlink missions. So that's just something we should keep in mind. However, SpaceX has noted that in 2021, they expect their orbital rocket numbers to jump to 48 launches. Altogether, 2020 was quite a busy year for spaceflight 
With the emergence of new launch providers, our biannual alignment with Mars, new technology reaching asteroids in the Sun, preparations for a return to the Moon, and last but certainly not least, the first crewed launches from a private company. It should be exciting to see what happens over the coming years with these developments and improvements upon current technology. But with all that being said, I have a question for you. What was your favorite spaceflight event from the year 2020? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But I wish all of you a happy and healthy new year, and I hope to see you in the next one.